Welcome to Ally PLM's Lunch Bites, the Solid Edge series. I'm Nathan Pfeiffer, an application engineer at Ally PLM. For those of you not familiar with our Lunch Bites, they're short videos intended to highlight certain areas of the software. We want these Lunch Bite videos to be useful to you, so if you have a topic that you'd like to suggest, please email us or fill out our online form, which can be found on our website. Today, we're going to cover face styles in Solid Edge. On the agenda for today, we have going over a few view, view tools, as well as applying face styles and creating custom face styles. I want to take a minute here to introduce you to the location of all the commands that I'll be using. When you launch Solid Edge, either in a part or an assembly, you'll find all the commands in the View tab and in the Styles group. You'll notice here I've blown this up on the screen so that you can see and become familiar with all these commands. I also wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some of the key commands that I'll be using most during the demonstration. First, the View Overrides command. The View Overrides command allows us to override a view style that we have in an active window without actually redefining that view style. And what a view style is, is how we view the model, whether it's in wireframe or shaded with visible edges, things of that nature. So we're able to take this command and select a new one without totally changing what was already there. The next command is the part painter command. While its functionality may be obvious, it paints parts, um, I, I wanted to point out that it's on, this command is only available when you have the Use Individual Part Styles options selected in the Color Manager dialog box. And I'll get to the Color Manager dialog box in just a second, but I wanted you to be aware that this can become turned off. Next, as I said, is the Color Manager dialog box. Um, this allows you to switch between different color display modes. Just as I spoke of a minute ago with the Part Painter, you can turn this on and off as well as a couple other different things of that nature. Next, we have the Styles button. Um, and for those of you not familiar, what I mean by Styles is that this command allows you to change your view styles like wireframe and shade with visible edges, your dimension standards, and your face styles, colors and lines and edges and things like that. So th this command en enables us to actually modify all these different things. Finally, we have the high quality rendering tool. You'll, you'll see in the picture on the left, I have a fixture here, and it's demonstrating how we can place uh, wood grain and chrome. This is actually the exhaust for the um, race car assembly I'll be using in the demonstration for all this. You'll also notice in the picture on the right, I have the transmission housing. And if you look closely, you'll see that it looks like it's been cast, as that would be created in real life. So what's important about that is to make it cast, you have to enable the bump maps. Casting is a type of bump maps to make it appear as though it's 3D. In order to have that happen, you have to have the high quality rendering option turned on. Otherwise, you will not be able to see your bump maps. Now that I've introduced you to some of the commands that I'll be using as well as their location, I'd like to go ahead and jump inside the software and show you this assembly that I have up on the screen. We're going to take a close look at the engine the exhaust, the transmission, and things of that nature and see how we can apply different materials and face styles to each one of these things. Now that we're in the software, you'll see I'll be using the race car or dragster to demonstrate all the commands I talked about during the PowerPoint presentation. To remind everyone again, all the commands I'll be using during this presentation can be found in the View tab and in the Styles group. To start, I'd like to talk about different ways that we can view the model or assembly in this case. You'll notice right now that we have a floor reflection turned on. We're able to do that this way, and we're able to do it inside the view overrides. We're able to add that drop shadow or floor reflection. You'll notice right now I have a drop shadow turned on. I'll go into the view overrides command later, but that's just a brief introduction of different ways that you can turn those on. You'll also notice that I currently have high quality rendering turned on. Again, this command is very important so that we can see bump maps and things of that nature. Now that I've introduced you to a couple of ways that we can view the model, we're going to jump inside just the engine. And we'll see if we can apply these commands in other ways. You'll notice 
that the engine already has a few colors placed on it. For example, the transmission housing is currently yellow. We actually don't want to see these colors because we want to go in and be able to place our own and our own materials as well. And the way to do that is by going back out onto the View tab once again, by going into the Color Manager dialog box. I talked about this earlier, that we needed to have the Show Part Face Colors turned on in order to use Part Painter. I'm going to leave that command on, but I'm going to turn off the command that shows and allow assembly style overrides. Currently, the assembly style has these existing colors on it. We want to turn these off so we can apply our own. Now with the colors gone, as I said, we can go in and apply our own colors. To start with, we're going to take a look at the valve cover. Everything I'm going to do will be within the context of this assembly. This is a much faster way of doing it instead of opening up each part individually, changing the color, saving it, and then updating the assembly. So I can just simply edit in place here. And the first command I'll demonstrate is the part painter command. You'll notice we have a list of different colors and even material colors that we have, such as bronze, chrome, copper, and things of that nature. For now, I'm just going to do a green plastic. You'll also see that I can select a body, a face, a feature, um, features of the same type to place this color on. For now, again, I'll leave it at body. You'll notice upon closing and returning, that the other one became green as well. That's because Solid Edge is intelligent and understands that this valve cover is identical to this one. So it made both of them the same exact color. Now that I've shown you the part painter command, I'd also like to jump into another way that you could do something like this. That's by using the styles command. Here we have view styles, dimension styles, and face styles is the important one. Here you can see that we can do the exact same thing that we just did through the part painter. This just adding colors to a different face and we're able to modify all of these as well through the styles. I'll get into a lot of these different tabs later as we go and apply different kinds of textures and bump maps, but for now just be aware that there are multiple ways to do this one command. The next thing we'll be doing is we'll be adding a chrome color and texture to the exhaust pipes. And this was shown in a picture during the PowerPoint as well. Again, we're going to edit this inside the context of the assembly. And now that this is open, we're going to go over here and we're going to edit this material by double clicking on it. And this is just another way to do what I've been explaining. Now that we're in here, you can see that I've, I've chosen a cast material already, iron. Except I want to make this chrome, which would be the accurate color. And I'd like to modify it as well. You'll notice that we have a lot of different options in here, including how we can preview it. Preview render is different ways that we can view it, whether it's in wireframe or in smooth shaded, which is what I've been working in. We can also preview different objects such as a cube or even a teapot to more accurately demonstrate what our model is going to look like. For now, I'll leave it on a sphere. You'll notice that we're able to edit things like hue, saturation, intensity, and get really specific with, with what colors we'd like to see. We can also come in and add textures. You'll notice that I already have selected a texture from the default texture types. This is the chrome texture. And with this, we can change a lot of different things. We can change its scale, its rotation, and you can see as I scroll this wheel back and forth, you can see how it changes on the preview as well of how we want that to rotate and look. And we can also change, most importantly, its weight. And, and that's how easily we can see this texture. The, the greater the weight, the more apparent that texture is going to be. For now, we'll apply it. And now you'll see that this is a much more chrome color, and you can see that texture on it as well, that that's become chrome. Again, we'll close and return. And you'll also notice that this one updated as well. Similar to our valve covers, Solid Edge realizes that, oh, that's just the same part once again, so it keeps that same material. Now that I've shown you a bit of how the materials are placed in that way, we're going to enable the Bump Maps command. Again, you'll notice that I have the high quality rendering option currently turned on. 
So I'm going to actually add a cast bump map to the transmission housing because that would be how the transmission housing is created is by cast. So once again, we'll open up this transmission housing and we'll edit, through the, edit it through the material, excuse me. This time we'll just leave it as gray instead of chrome and we'll modify this once again. This time you'll notice that I don't have a texture previously selected and that's because I don't need one in this situation. All I'm going to apply is a bump map. You'll notice here that Solid Edge comes with default JPEG images and also PNG images. These will preview on the screen to your right and show what you're going to be placing to the model. Now that we've selected it, again we have similar, um, similar options to how we edit this as we did with the texture. We can change its rotation and its height. The height is important here because the, the bump map appears 3D. So I want to really limit this height as one's a little too big. We're going to make it a quarter. Again, we'll apply this to the model. And you'll see that now this part looks as though it's a cast part, which is much more accurate. You'll also see that I've changed this face to make it look as though it's been machined, which is how that would be done as well. It wouldn't appear as though it was cast like the rest of the transmission housing. Now that I've placed that bump map of the casting on the transmission housing, I'd like to come up here and point out in the view overrides command a couple of... Um, couple of options I forgot to mention that I had turned on prior to doing that. And that's the high quality and bump maps option. You need to turn these on in view overrides to enable the ability to go have a bump map tab inside the material that we went and placed that from. So that's also a very important thing to do before we're able to actually place the bump map. Now I wanted to talk about for a few minutes all this view overrides command. You'll notice again, as I mentioned previous, that you can turn on and off the reflections and drop shadows on here, as well as the casting shadows um, and depth fading, textures and things of that nature. But also you're able to change how we look at the model. And this is what I talked about, how it would um, not permanently override the styles, but for the for this inside this model, it would. So we can change this to wireframe, smooth shade, and things of that nature once again. We also can add different lighting areas, as well as changing the hue and saturation and things like that of the model. And one thing I haven't mentioned is the background. So what we have here in the background is a couple of different options of how we want this. Right now I have it set on gradient, which goes from gray to white. But I can change this through here of different colors I'd like it to go gradient between. We can also change that from vertical to horizontal, or we can have just a solid color such as white and blue, and a lot of people like to work even with an image behind the model as, as though it's a company image or something of that nature. So I want to talk just talk about that for a few minutes, some things that I forgot to mention previous. Now that we've kind of I've introduced you to a couple of these commands. There's a few more things I'd like to show you. One would be putting a tick, uh, picture using a texture on a part. And we're going to do that by using the tachometer. So again, we'll just go in through the material. And maybe we'll do something like this brass for now. But the color doesn't necessarily matter in this example because what we want to do is just add this texture and we're going to go in and add this tachometer. Now you've seen this, we can change and play with the weight and rotation and things like that, whether it's on surface or the world. But right now I know that these are the appropriate um, settings that need to be in place for this to appear correctly on that tachometer. So again, I can apply an OK. And I can actually apply this to the model and now you'll see that that image, that bitmap image that I'd gotten off Google, for example, is now on this model. The final thing I'd like to show is adding a wood grain to the steering wheel of the race car. And we're going to do this by going out into the top level assembly of the car. And notice that we don't have any colors on right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into view of not view overrides, excuse me, the color manager, and I'm going to show and allow assembly style overrides. So now we're back to these original colors that came up on the model. 
I'm going to go in here and take a look at the steering wheel. I'll zoom in close inside the cockpit here. You can see that there's currently a wood grain placed on it, but I'd like to show you how this is done. So again, inside the context of the entire assembly, I'm going to change this material. This time instead of tan, I'll just pick a different color. Gold, for example. Again, the color doesn't necessarily matter because we're going to place a texture over top of it. I just did that so that we could modify the different style. Now there's a lot of different a lot of different default wood pictures that actually come. So you can select whatever one you need. And for this example, I'm going to use this first one. You'll see that it's demonstrated here in the texture window. Again, I'll apply this to the world. And then we'll apply it to the model. And now you can see that I've added that texture of wood grain to the steering wheel. Again, the view overrides are turned on, so it didn't appear. But I could turn those back off and see that that is still present. The final thing I'd like to talk about is going back up into the color manager option to give you guys a more clear picture of what it's able to do. So we have used individual part styles currently turned on. But if we went up to use solid edge option color settings, you see that there are default colors for an active model versus inactive versus construction that we actually have the ability to change as well through the solid edge options. For this whole example, I've used the use individual part colors though. And here we can do that same thing as where we can change the construction color to be one of these things such as gold or even blue or red. We can also do that to weld beeves, curves, and threaded cylinders. So we have a lot of different options inside the color manager of how exactly we manage the colors that appear in our model. Now just for a real quick summary of what all I've shown here today. These are just a few of the pictures of things that I've demonstrated. As you see here on the screen we have the transmission housing again and the valve covers and things of that nature. What we've done is shown a variety of different ways that you can apply face styles to your model, whether that's through textures or bump maps and a variety of different ways that we can apply these face styles, for example, through the styles dialog box. And we all get these very cool, very interesting ways of viewing the model. That wraps up this edition of Solid Edge Lunch Bites. If you missed this one or have missed any in the past, please go to our website and we post all our previously played Lunch Bites there. You can even sign up for the next Lunch Bites. The next in Solid Edge will be July 30th, 2015 of working with imported part geometry inside of Solid Edge. Also here you'll notice down the bottom right, this is where you can suggest a topic for future Solid Edge Lunch Bites. Finally, I'd like to thank all of you for your time today. If you have any questions about this presentation, please feel free to contact me or email our support department at the information shown here. Thank you and have a great day.